My name is René Redzepi. I come from um, Copenhagen, Denmark, from a restaurant called Noma. At our restaurant, we uh, are a restaurant that try to create or cook with the products that surround us. We try to express uh, on the plate uh, our terroir, which means that uh, we cook extremely seasonal, we work with producers, we work with uh, farmers, we work a lot with nature, with wild products, uh, and just exploring the seasonality to the extreme and trying to define what is something Scandinavian, something Nordic, onto a plate. Of course I'm involved in, in, in Cook It Raw because the first raw was at, at, at Noma, <laughs> in my restaurant, uh, where, where I helped organize it. And also because uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to meet with uh, your colleagues and, uh, and see different ways of thinking. And you know, even though we share the same format, winter was hard, it's super interesting, very inspiring to see how different people actually, uh, let's say, uh, how do you say that in English, you know, express it or interpret it. Interpret. Is it exactly, interpret it. Um, and this is the reason why, 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 why I'm a part of this. For well, the event here, when you know winter was hard, that's the concept, uh, the theme of the whole dinner. Uh, <clears throat> which, of course, uh, uh, winter was hard can mean many things. It can be interpreted in so many ways. For me, instantly, I choose to to find uh, or look at when was the last time uh, in our world that winter was really hard. Of course, for my colleague Alex Antala, he would say that winter is hard every year in Scandinavia, but. Uh, it has changed a lot over the past few years. And I found out that the last time there was a very hard winter was in 41. The winter in 41 was excruciating. Uh, uh, lakes that were not very uh, deep, they froze completely. The fish, they froze. It was like a big ice block with frozen fish in it. Um, some of the waters were frozen all the way to Sweden. You could actually walk across the water. Insane. Or skating. Yeah. On top of everything, as a little extra plus, we were occupied by the Nazis. So there was rationalization. People couldn't even get a cup of coffee <laughs> if, uh, if they wanted to. And so I thought, I will base my, my dish around that period, around that winter. Um, and I would base it solely and purely on what would they be able to, 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 to cook if they had pickled and dried and so on and so on like I had you know if they actually had let's say the, uh, the imagination and and uh, and uh, the skills to do the pickling the way that for instance we do at Noma where we pickle everything uh, then for for one night in this in this winter they could have created out of these vinegary hot flavors uh, a little breath of fresh air a, a piece of light you know a, a, a night with with a plus 25 degrees you know where they were smile where they could smile again this is what I want to try how do you take all these preserves and 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 and, and give give people a smile on their face uh, I pick up roses we do that every year 100 kilos of roses wild roses from the beach and elderflowers and flowers of angelica and so on so there's a lot of flowery tones in there you know, it, it had to be, I wanted, because the classic is that you pickle root vegetables, beets, and you put sugar in it, you put spices, it's quite rustic flavored, you know. Um, but I wanted, uh, I wanted them to have a, like a, a touch of surprise, a bit of flower, a bit of uh, closing their eyes and, and tasting the summer, you know. Uh, so there will be strong flower comp uh, flavors in there, especially rose, pickled rose. Um, but of course I have uh, pickled beets and pickled carrots and pickled pumpkin and pickled elderberries and pickled this and that and I mean there's like 25 different pickles on. Obviously cuisine is flavor, good flavor, but, uh, but uh, there's other to food than just immediate flavor immediate burst of good flavor like a steak or with frites with bernays you know uh, it's comforting it's immediately burst of flavor and then there's another level 
uh, for me, this is the level where, 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 where the future of cuisine is. For instance, in David's dish, there's so many things in that dish, you know. But when you look at it, it's an uh, egg and a bouillon. You know, people will probably say, what's this? The egg is only 40 degrees hot, you know. He wants the egg to feel yes. the same temperature. <laughs> That's when it comes out. Uh, which is also brilliant, but uh, there's a, a great message of respect and, and, uh, and, uh, and respect, you know, just uh, a type of respect that, that, that in our world and perhaps in many other worlds of whatever, uh, in the past 10 years, you haven't noticed that respect. It's been more, more, more. Forward, 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 you know. So, uh, so it's a very drastic way of, of like stepping back which I think is, is brilliant. Of course, you have to consider this when you taste this because, yeah, perhaps the dish doesn't taste good. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. In this case, I mean, it sounds almost crazy to say it, that it doesn't matter, but it actually doesn't. Because sometimes, uh, and, and it should be by some of these great guys, that they make a statement about food that just oozes out here and there and everywhere and, and get, gets uh, some life. and. and and other chefs, restaurants, they interpret it in their way, and you know this res message of respect uh, just oozes out everywhere. This is a really cool bunch of guys. Huh?